What is the story that strangers, waiters, bus passengers, cashier so, etc, probably tell that involves you? The poor woman forced to sit next to me on the Bolt bus from Nick to Philly in October 2013 probably still dreams of me, you see. The night before I had smashed my face into the sharp edge of a coffee table during a drunken hookup on the floor of my friend's apartment. I almost but not quite put my teeth clean through the thin piece of skin under the lip but above the chin. Being sort of young and definitely drunk, we decided to not go to the hospital rather. Stick a large band-aid on my face and hope for the best. I also had what turned out to be the beginning stages of bronchitis. I had to get on the bus with a hangover. A cough rivaling that of a de-ancient stree child. A cut on my face that would open and bleed profusely each time I moved my mouth. I also woke up late for the bus so there was no time to even try to clean up my appearance. This poor lovely woman sits down next to me. I smile at her in an attempt to convince her I am human and alive and I promptly start gushing blood from my face. I then begin to panic. Which sets off a coughing fit blood gets into my mouth and despite my best efforts to cover my mouth. The chaos of the situation prevailed and I basically sputtered aerosolized blood all over our little shared area of the bus. There was nowhere for this sweet sweet angel of a woman to go. And so, she was forced to sit next to me for the whole 3 hour drive. The pressure of this horrifically awkward interaction proved too much for me and so I decided my best course of action was to knock myself out with cough medicine and wait for either death, or my ride to pick me up at the bus stop. Mercifully, sleep took me after 10 minutes of determined silence from both of us. I made it home and spent the following week in bed. I also have a scar on my chin. Thank you for the gold and the commiseration reddit. The scar on my chin is fading. The emotional scars are much more persistent. While living in Japan, I often have what you'd call second language exhaustion. I guess I can understand most of what people say in Japanese and converse well enough. But at the end of a long day my mind gets tired out and it all just sounds like gibberish. Let me tell you. It's a bizarre feeling to look someone in the face and think two hours ago I understood everything you were saying. When the heck did you start sounding like Charlie Brown's grandma? At times like that, when people talk to me, my mouth just starts throwing out random phrases that make no sense at all. Or I accidentally use words phrases that sound similar to the ones I should be saying. Some of my worst cringe moments. At the supermarket. Employee. Boeing. Irashe Mace. Welcome to the store. Me, Boeing back, Irashe Mace, welcome to the store, talking to a guy friend, what I meant to say, he, -e. Jowzu, wow, you're good at this, what I said, he, -e. Josie, wow, you're a woman, after a meal with friends, pointing at my full stomach, what I meant to say, ha, I pay neck, ah, uh, I'm so full, you know, what I said, ha, uh, a pay neck, ah, uh, ah, uh. I've sure got some nice boobs. Am I right guys? Edit. How could I forget probably the worst one? On seeing a cute baby. What I meant to say. Ah. Uh, Koei. Ah. Uh, or. How cute. What I said. Ah. Uh, Kawei. Ah. Uh, uh, how scary. Probably bus driver passengers. I was running after the bus. Driver stopped and I face planted right in front of everyone. I got back up. Lost my footing on the step to get into the bus and fell backwards and hit my head on the pavement. The driver dropped me at the hospital. One time in high school I accidentally ended up taking a Latin test when I am not in a Latin class. I was too embarrassed to leave the classroom. So I pretended to think hard about each question and then just wrote random answers. I figured I could just turn in the test and leave without anyone realizing until after I left that I wasn't in that class. Except when I went to turn it in, the teacher happened to look down at my paper, looked up at me and realized I wasn't in the class, then looked down at my answers again and just said oh, never in my life have I felt so much disappointment aimed at me than that one oh, I was so embarrassed, but I like to think that that teacher now has a funny story about the idiot who came into the wrong class and took the test anyways. Right as I left the grocery store, the skies opened up and water poured down. I ran to my car in a nearly blinding rain, grabbed the driver's side door and yanked the handle. It didn't open. It, as I got soaked, I yanked and yanked and yanked, but it wouldn't open. It was locked, but I didn't lock it. 
After a few seconds I heard a scream, looked inside the car, and saw an elderly woman sitting in the passenger's seat with a terrified expression on her face. WTF. Then I looked one row over in the lot and saw my car. Calmly waiting for me. I had run up to an identical car to mine and tried to yank the door open. I am sure that in the following years. That old woman repeatedly told the story of the time some crazy guy tried to break into her car and kidnap her. One evening I was having some friends over for a fire and some pizza. So I ordered the pizza. Specified for the driver to bring I out back and then I went outside to get the fire together before my friends arrived. I started chopping the wood and was burning up so I went inside to put on some gym shorts. At this point I realized all my shorts were in the wash and I saw a skirt of my girlfriend's laying on the floor. Forgetting about the pizza man coming I just put on the skirt and nothing else and went outside to chop wood in it feeling much less hot in it. After about 10 minutes of chopping wood shirtless and in my pretty skirt I hear what the duck and turn around sweaty holding my axe with a skirt on to see the pizza man just starting at me. Needless to say it was a little awkward. Was at the office supporting a major project we had done on our finance department overnight. I'm in IT. After the important stuff was done. I went to the bathroom to take a it. Was a long coffee filled night so my stomach was feeling it. Sit down. Start doing my business and someone else comes and sits in the only other stall in there. Nice shoes I think to myself. I finish up before the other person. So I wipe and get up. Our office has auto flushing toilets. So it flushes. Logged. NBD I think to myself. We'll just go wash my hands and tell facilities. Bend down to pull my pants up. Infrared picks me up and flushes again. At this point the water comes within one stroke eight of an inch from the rim. I'm getting nervous. There is tons of splatter it floating in that devil's brew of water and it's right at the edge of disaster. At this point I do my best James Bond impersonation to try and slide out of the stall without being noticed by the villainous toilet lasers. I successfully make it out. Q. Grab the stall handle to close the door and I hear the sound I had so desperately tried to avoid. Flush. I instinctively say oh my god. Auto flush. It infused water starts covering the floor in all directions. And fast. As I say this. I see MR. Nice shoes TM lift his feet up in the air to keep them safe. Like the floor is lava. And yells what the duck. I blurt out going to get help BRB. And leave him. Trapped in his stall. Holding his feet off the ground while taking a writ of his own. Walk downstairs. Find the front desk person and say someone flooded the bathroom on the second floor. It's disgusting in an off-put tone to try to cover my tracks. I've always imagined that story being retold by MR. Nice shoes. When I worked in a retail store, I was helping a disabled lady in a motorized wheelchair go around the store and fill her basket. At the end she thanked me and said goodbye and as I put the basket on her lap, I placed it on the joystick and she shot back at full acceleration into a clothes rail. She was understandably shook, and so was I. So I said bye and retreated slowly backwards into the children's wood apartment. A bit like this. HTTP. Hey. Remember that boy who accidentally set himself on fire with matches in the grocery store? I had grabbed an ass of matches in the gas station before my dad took us shopping. Unbeknownst to him. Walking around one of the matchbooks came undone and rubbed a match head against the friction strip of another matchbook. Flame on. I smothered the flames. Suffering an incinerated pocket and mild burn to my thigh. But dad gave me a third degree burn to my ass when we got home. I paid for a lady shopping when both her cards got declined and she started crying and putting things back her daughter had a magazine and she started crying and asking why I pretended that she had dropped a you a cute 20 note and handed it to her so she could pay. I've been there and know how it feels. Anyway about a month or so later my brother in law whose girlfriend worked in the supermarket started telling the story to me and my wife about this guy who paid for the shopping. So I'm that guy the till girls and Morrisons tell stories about. Woohoo. Edit. Wow. My first ever gold. Thank you stranger. I'd previously posted the story somewhere else a few years back. I like to think I helped enough that day for that lady to turn things around. There could have been numerous reasons that are nobody's business but hers for that happening. I knew that sinking feeling she was having too well and I'm by no way a wealthy man but it seemed the decent thing to do. Maybe she'll do it for someone else someday. 
Don't think it makes up for all the times I've been an asshole though. But it's a start. Thank you. Two years ago I stopped at a car wash I had in one of my pockets for 100 euros bills. In the other pocket I had 3 euros to give the guy as a tip. I was talking at the phone. I wasn't paying attention. Put the money in the tip jar and left. After 2 hours when I got home. I realized that I only have 3 euros in my pocket. So the guy received a 400 euros tip that day I am sure that he told everyone about the crazy guy that gave him a huge tip. Edit. It was in Romanian currency. I said it in euros because I wanted everybody to understand the amount. This is the 5 ron 1.2 euros. This is the 500 ron 120 euros. I had 3 of them in each pocket. They look the same. So instead of giving the guy a tip of 15 ron, 3.6 euros. I gave him 1500 ron, 360 euros. The wash was already paid. Didn't costed me 360 euros. That money were there for a different reason. When people I don't know ask me to take pictures of them I normally take a few funny selfies while they get set up. Was riding shotgun in my own jeep Cherokee and I had my backpack on the floor at my feet. I was in a big rush to get into the bank so as soon as he parked. I pushed open the door and hopped right out. Except that my feet were somehow through one strap of the backpack so they didn't come with me. I just sort of plopped out. Landing flat on my back with just my feet still in the car. In a crowded parking lot of a bank on a busy street at rush hour. My BF was laughing too hard to help me up. As were many passerby. But the people still talking about this 12 years later are my co-workers because I strained both Achilles with this agile maneuver so my ankles and feet swelled up and I couldn't fit them into shoes for over a week. Had to wear flip flops in November and limp around the office in socks the whole time. Have never been able to live it down with my friends and family. I had an endoscopy and colonoscopy unsedated in the same appointment. Almost every physician and nurse in that hospital came to see. And when I was in recovery, so many asked me questions. I'm well known there. I called recently to get my records and the receptionist said you're the girl who did it unsedated. First time I went to India I had purple hair. Went to the zoo because why not? Every kid there didn't want pictures of the lions or the tigers or the monkeys or anything. They wanted pictures with the white guy with purple hair. I'm sure there are pictures of me surrounded by smiling kids in several houses in India. That time they drove jogged past a topless girl carrying a hedgehog down a country road. When I was growing up my mother drove Cadillacs. My grandfather had been really sick and was relearning how to drive. Keep in mind he was in his late 60s and in fairly good shape. He convinced his daughter-in-law, my mother, to let him and myself, a young 4 year old, to go pick up my father from work. I was in the back seat in my car seat when his foot slipped at a stoplight. He ran through the front of a store completely destroying the front of it. I slept through the entire thing. Didn't wake up until my firefighter pulled me out of my car seat. That's when I discovered my love for sleep. And my ability to sleep through almost anything. Edit. Everyone was fine. In fact the store owners had been begging their landlord to renovate the front of their store. They collected insurance. And no one was hurt. My friends and I went camping up in the mountains one summer. We all took shrooms and our trip sitter drove us. High as a kite and bringing along the trusty old bong. To this beautiful beach by a lake. Because it was legal to do so there and just because we felt like it. We all took off our bikini tops. I'm from the tropics and this lake was formed from glacial water so I didn't run in to swim and splash around as the rest of my friends did. I probably would have cramped and drowned had I tried. It's the middle of summer. There are people everywhere at this primo vacation location and my group wasn't particularly well hidden. I'm bong sitting and hitting while my friends splash around and dunk themselves in the crystal clear icy lake. A nice family walks by while my friends are a ways into the water. I'm still on dry land. Both tits out. Off my mind from these particularly potent mushrooms. Trying not to piss myself laughing at what these strangers saw. A tiny ethnic girl. Half naked. Hunched over a glass bong. Trying and failing to hide it with her body. Prying with laughter. At my big Tesco a few years ago. I was a uni student so times were hard. 
Tesco has an offer for 1 kilogram of Cathedral City which was you acute 6 but had been reduced by you acute 1. I was a cheeseaholic so I thought it was a pretty good deal. I got to the counter and instead of being reduced by you acute 1 it was reduced to you acute 1 I went back and bought 10 kilograms worth. In Japan. When you want a waiter you say sumimazen. Well I ask my friend who is closer to the view of our waitress to turn and say sumimazen. He turns and there is a guy right there who he kinda quietly and directly says it to. It wasn't our waitress but he responds yes what would you like? In English. Food gets ordered. Asks us where we are from. And welcomes us to Japan. Then he walks back to his table. My friend got another customer of the place to order food for us and went back to his table of like 15 co-workers. We laughed when we realized what happened. They laughed when he told his table. It was a good time. Park my smart car in a Tesco car park. Got out and proceeded to walk to the shop entrance. I pressed the lock on my key and turned round to check that it locked. Then it. I see my car rolling backwards across two lanes of traffic narrowly missing numerous vehicles. So I sprint to try and catch up with it whilst screaming every swear word I know and multiple people watching the whole thing unfold. For some reason I thought I'd be able to run the length of the car park and stop the vehicle but I get about 3 feet away before it rolls into another parked car and grinds to a halt. Lots of people saw. My dad used to drive a bus where the front window was sloped rather than being flat and left a very large open area above the engine. During the winter that area got very warm and was large enough for me to lie down in and read or fall asleep. There was a few times that passengers stopped what they were doing when they saw me in there and had to be prompted. My friend and I threw a party in a restaurant. Included in that party was my friend's very expensive Afghan hound. But we'd agreed beforehand that the dog was to go home a few hours early so it wouldn't get stress bored. So we had a deal with another friend, who was a cab driver, to pick up the dog and then take it home for us. A lot of people who were outside that night witnessed two folks hail down a cab, put their expensive dog inside and then watch the car drive away. I flew home the other week with a nasty cold. All was well and good until the descent. My ears didn't pop. The whole way down I was crying and writhing in agony, grasping at my face and pulling my ears trying desperately to make them pop. In amongst it all I noticed the people in my row were looking at me like I was possessed and leaning as far away from me as possible. Well, I have weird reactions to coming out of anesthesia. I always forget where I am. And if a relative isn't in the room with me I panic and try to escape. When I had my wisdom teeth removed, all four were coming in horizontally. I had to be put completely out. I told the nurse, dentist and husband that he needed to be in the room with me when I woke up. Or I might try to fight people. They all three laughed it off. Because how much damage could I really do? I woke up and the only person in the room was a male nurse. I panicked. Smashed the guy's face into the wall while he had his back turned and ran out of the office. Down the street into an IHOP screaming that someone was after me. Apparently my husband was in the bathroom at the time. Both the dentist office and the IHOP call the police. By far the most embarrassing thing I have ever been through in my life. Sounds boring. But when I went to vacation in Croatia we ordered one of every pancake on the menu to eat as dinner. In the Netherlands. Eating pancakes for dinner is normal. The pancakes were listed under the desert section though. I think we had 6 each and the waiter had a smile from ear to ear with every pancake he brought us. We gave him a big tip even when it's not customary to do so in Europe. Just a small tip will do most of the time. Had a public meltdown when I thought I lost my 5 year old son in a strip mall. Screaming sobbing about how you can't do that. I didn't know where you were. I was calling for you. A whole store got silent and was looking at me. Parents who have lost kids in public places can relate to this. When I was very young, like 3 or 4 one summer at camp, for whatever reason, instead of changing into a swimsuit to go swimming, I stripped naked and sprinted 3 laps around the camp. Then I went back into the changing room, got into my swimsuit, and continued as though nothing had happened. 10 years later, my brother starts college. He's doing an icebreaker with some of the girls in his dorm, and they are discussing weird things they've seen. One of the girls gets up and says one time at summer camp, many years ago. 
One time me and a pal were stoned and wanted to get some milkshakes so we went to the corner store and tried to operate this machine but it won't work. We asked the guy on cash if it was broken. He didn't seem like he knew so he came over to check. He started to fiddle with it and mutter in a foreign language in irritation and me and my buddy couldn't help but laugh because we were just standing around waiting for him to fix it and after about 10 minutes we were still standing there and about to bail when he got it running and as soon as I went to put my cup in the machine I knocked the cover for it right off and spent the next 5 minutes trying to fix it while my friend was telling me to leave it. I didn't want to be that guy to just leave it so I ducked around for a long time before I realized the guy was still right behind me waiting for me to stop my stone stumbling around so he could fix it. After all was said and done we went to pay and when I went to put my card in I put use the error and one baffled at why my pin wasn't working. It was a bad experience and I should have just stayed home. My friend's ex-girlfriend worked at an animal park. She reversed over an ostrich. Panic slammed it into first and killed it. So years later I go to a basement jacks gig and lo and behold they have an ostrich t-shirt and I tell the seller the story dart at the end of the gig I go back with my mate to the merch stand to get her a t-shirt and repeat the story to the lady who replied oh you're that girl. Edit word. Oh man I've got one but I'm probably too late to this colon. Well anyway. Here goes. I was 16 and had been diagnosed with Tourette's over the summer. My most noticeable tick was sort of like a half bark, half yelp. I don't know how else to describe it. I developed a real social anxiety pretty quickly and hated going out in public. Anyway, my parents convinced me on Christmas to go and see the movie Avatar with them. It was getting great reviews and despite not having seen a movie since my diagnosis, they convinced me I wouldn't disrupt anyone and that we'd get there early and sit in the back corner away from most other moviegoers. So we did exactly that. And I sit in the very back right corner of the theater. However, the social anxiety from knowing I was in a room of about 300 strangers for the next 3 hours got to me. I was ticking like crazy. And hated every moment of it. Through a loud, action-packed movie. Every few seconds the entire theater could hear a half-muffled bark coming from the back of the room. I don't know why I didn't excuse myself from the theater. It would have been the right thing to do but I guess I wasn't in a great state of mind. So that would be my answer OP. I'm sure that somewhere. Somebody who was in that theater tells friends the story of how they had to sit through the Avatar premiere while this kid in the back of the theater couldn't stop barking. And they likely had no idea what the duck was wrong with me. It's a funny story now in hindsight. Even though I still tick at 24. They aren't as bad or as frequent but I still don't enjoy going to see movies like I should. Running to catch the streetcar. I tore my calf muscle and collapsed right on the streetcar tracks. Thankfully, there wasn't one coming in that direction. At a local minor league baseball game, the umpire lost count of strikes during a playoff game somewhere in the second inning. He did it again in the fourth. I took it upon myself. Probably because I was nearly a dozen beers in at this point, to begin counting strikes as the count from Sesame Street. It wasn't long before an entire section behind home plate had joined in. Probably the time I had food poisoning and was trying to make it home. I had to get off the bus long before my stop because I felt nauseous. So I frantically got the driver to let me off, bolted off the bus and copiously vomited in the nearest possible receptacle. Which was one of the trees in pots flanking the doors of the Thai restaurant on the corner. Not my proudest moment. And I imagine the bus passengers were probably wide-eyed and watching with bile fascination. Pun not intended. That being said, I still look at that tree like an old friend. On one of my first days on the job as delivery guy driving around in a van, one of the packages was addressed to an old people's home that was also partially a mental institution. I parked the van in front of the entrance of the building and went in the back of the car to get the parcel. When I entered the wind blew the loading door shut and locked me in the back of the van. The handle on the inside was broken so I couldn't open it. I started banging on the walls of the van and asked if someone could let me out. But since it was also a mental institution, people apparently thought I was some mental patient that tried to escape out of the car. After a minute or two of banging on the car and asking for help. Someone hesitantly opened the door and asked what was going on. When I got out, several people had gathered to see who was in the car and whether I was actually crazy or not. 
I've never been more embarrassed in my life. This just happened a week ago. I was out drinking with my friends and I wanted to leave for the next bar because it is closer to my home. And I knew I would be struggling during the walk stumble. As I leave the bar, a bachelorette party on one of those pub crawler things, cart with 10 or so seats where everyone pedals to make it move, drove by. They were going my way so I hopped on for a quick ride. I don't know what was said, but as we passed my destination I hopped off without them stopping and went about my night. I like to think that I was the highlight of their night. Last day of exams in first year of uni, I'm with my friends and then girlfriend at the SU and we're celebrating. It must only have been 12.30pm but I'd already had 5-6 pints of strongbow when my girlfriend decided to take me back to halls. We get on the bus and I rest my head against the window as I'm fairly slaughtered. While the vibrations of the bus moving in my skull had started to make me feel quite unwell. My girlfriend later described my face as blue. So I push the button to stop the bus. I realize I'm going to chuck up very soon and hope the bus stops and I get away in time. Didn't happen. The bus stops but before the door opens I hurl on the floor. Right onto the skirts of a woman wearing a hijab next to the door. I mumble my apologies and stagger off whilst my girlfriend runs to buy me some water and a new shirt. We go to the next bus stop and all the passengers are there from my bus. As my bus had to go back to the depot to be cleaned. Haven't drunk Strongbow since. Seeing a guy go off the high dive or platform at a swimming pool and landing so flat on his face that the sound silenced everybody and the lifeguards got out of their chairs. Then he just swam to the side and got out, laughing about it. It should have killed him. I'm that diver. I competed at a higher level through college. What I enjoyed doing at a public pool was what we called suicide dives or clown dives. Dives that look like you completely screwed up and land horribly. Of course there are tricks to it that make it appear far worse than what the diver is actually experiencing. To see why I didn't get hurt. You would have to watch it from underwater when I enter. But for everyone above the water, it's a great illusion. I called one the ski jump suicide. I would jump off the platform in the Olympic ski jumper position and hold that all the way to the water. Off 10 meters it looks insane. I like to think that maybe a few service personnel here or there remember me as the nice guy who was pleasant and polite to them and gave them a decent tip. Every day that I worked for years I would butt a sandwich from a restaurant and a single banana from the adjacent target. I was the banana man. The counter staff at the local McDonkadonks probably remembers when my daughter activated the tea dispenser handle and the entire thing came off in her hand. There was a brief tea flood. Which we had to cope with by putting my cup under the hole until it was almost full. Then quickly switching to her cup while emptying mine into the drain under the soda fountain. Back and forth until the tea level fell to below the level of the hole. A guy fell backwards down a huge flight of concrete stairs and whilst everyone was freaking out I did all the stabilize. Comfort. Call ambulance stuff. A few people came up and thanked me for helping. It's my uncle but he walked into the bank and started talking to the teller and just it himself. And kept it in himself. He asked if they wanted help cleaning up and they told him to leave. I cut her off after her fifth drink. She gets upset and leaves. I catch her not even 10 minutes later. With three new drinks bought by some guy. Kick her out again with her new friend. She returns again and is actually stealing other people's drinks. It wasn't until I threatened to call the cops that she finally left for good. I would be surprised if she made it home safe or even alive. Not my proudest moment. About a week ago I was at the gym. I do my usual workout and then grab a towel and strip down and head to the steam room. Chilling in the steam room for my normal 15 minutes while walking to the area with the scales. The combination of wet shower floors and my wet feet from the steam room I ate it. But not a normal slip. Oh. This had to be dramatic. I felt my body going so I reached my hands out to try and grab the wall. The way I moved it caused my towel to come undone. Then my legs started going and I probably looked like Shaggy from Scooby Doo when he starts to run. Legs were everywhere. Next thing I knew I was on the ground and the cleaning dude comes by and just says careful. You gotta be careful as I'm laying buck ass naked on this wet gym floor. I got up and realized at least 5 dudes saw me. 
I was walking down the street in my hometown one afternoon back in my high school days. I can't remember why, but I was having a bad day and complaining to my friend about it as we walked. I finally exclaimed. This day can't get any worse. Literally as the words left my mouth. Someone in a car driving by launched a basketball out the passenger window, nailing me square in the face. I was in the downtown area of my town, with a number of outdoor eateries and coffee shops nearby. A ton of people saw and busted out laughing as my day did. Somehow, get even worse.